Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's your boy, SE1, and we got a very special guest. We have Miss Sarah Layton of Layton Sports Cards on the channel today. Give us a little bit of insight of the history of Layton and give us advice as new breakers breaking into the hobby. But how are you doing today, Sarah? I am doing really well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited for this to, to have uh, to happen. To um, decided to record this video and uh, getting to know a little bit about you, the history of, uh, of latent sports cards, and, and what you think about the current, present day, and time. So, first, who is Sarah Layton? <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah Layton is, I guess, owner of Layton Sports Cards co-owner my husband and I uh, started this business back in 2012 I uh, we live in Florida right now we're dog parents I have two dogs and a cat and just kind of enjoying life I guess uh, hobby wise I joined Layton Sports Cards full-time about six years ago so wow. I've been full-time working at Layton Sports Cards full-time um, doing Started out. I was gonna do some breaks. Works out not for good. you. Not good, not for me. That's fine. So I kind of fell into like an operations manager position, and we've grown so much now. I mainly do HR stuff, um, but every once in a while, I'm in there, you know, doing all the dirty work. I do sort cards every once in a while, which is never really something I enjoy. But I do sort cards. I'll clean up the warehouse. I'll, you know a product that comes in and kind of just do everything you're like a jack of all trades pretty much so well pretty that much. that's cool i mean breaking it, it it's hard being especially with your guys's breaks i mean what you list what uh you know like 14 breaks out of a day at times yeah and yeah. so to be on camera it, it's a very taxing taxing thing <laughs> Yeah, it is. And I mean, when I was giving it a shot, we weren't doing nearly as many breaks, um, but I just don't have the right, I feel like I don't have the right personality for it. Um, you know how it is. I mean, pe people don't get anything. They get a little rough and yeah. the internet can be a pretty harsh place. And I am, I'm not the person to like sit back and just kind of laugh it off and just keep going, which is, I feel like something that a lot of breakers need to have you know, while they're streaming live. Um, I don't have that. I just want to respond and kind of like come back at you and it doesn't really... Uh... That's the jersey in you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, the, yeah. Jersey the jersey in comes you. out pretty quickly and it doesn't, go over, it doesn't go over very well. Okay, so I'm going to switch the scene really fast and I'm going... I put together a little video for you to, to review in the background. We have a history of uh, Layton Sports cards. So I went far, as far back as YouTube allows me to go. And then I started just, you know, piecing together um, break, pieces and bits of breaks from Layton Sports cards. And this starts off in 2011, 2012, and this is Titanium NHL. Um, but on Sarah Layton still, are, so are you a collector now? Are you, what? Yeah, I am. I wasn't back then. Um, collecting kind of is new to me. I actually joined the collecting side of things when a lot of people did back in 2020. There was a card that was pulled in one of our breaks and I had to have it. And I said to Rich, I'm like, get me that card. I don't care what it costs. I have to have it. And it's not a high value card, but that kind of started the whole me as a collector, <laughs> as a collector. So is there a I, I want to add, I want to add, uh -huh. looking at this video, this is how low tech i guess we were so the table that he's on is like a rickety old card table you know like a folding table yeah the whole thing shakes you'll see it shake a lot in the old videos oh he no i noticed <laughs> yeah there's two jerseys in the background where literally were jerseys that he, he would wear so that it's also proof that i've been a bryce harper fan since he was a rookie okay. <laughs> um and our logo that's sitting there on top of the box is literally just a piece of paper. It was printed off of a printer and it was just folded and taped so that it would sit. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. That's yes. awesome though, but- I had I, to add that in. <laughs> when, when we're talking about 2011, I mean, I could just imagine, there was not many people around at that time. So I could just imagine the creativity that you just had to come up with was just unreal. And so, I mean, as a consumer watching it, I would have never known without you telling me. Um, 
right? I, I would have <laughs> never guessed that was just, now that you say it, I can see that it's kind of like tri, is it like trifolded and like taped yes, on a box? Yes, yep, <laughs> with some scotch tape so it doesn't move. <laughs> That is awesome. You so, gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, no. And Mojo Break, who was around back then and we're really good friends with, they had, and I love it, it cracks me up, it was like, do you know the science fair boards? Yes. It like folds open, it's like a, a trifold thing. They used to have that and they would have, I believe they had stuff like glued to it or taped to it and that was their backdrop. Oh, really? See? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's actually interesting. We'll, we'll get, we'll touch more on the evolution later today. So um, our, in terms of uh, PC now, who, who do you PC? Is there a specific team, a player? Yeah, so I'm a big fan of Philly team. So like there's Claude Giroux, but um, I'm a big fan big fan of uh the sixers the phillies the flyers um i'm not really a football fan but um you know i mean my family kind of raised me to be an eagles fan which i'm not an eagles fan but um the first card that i ever got the one that i had to have was actually um oh, what year was this 2020 diamond icons baseball and it was a cut auto i don't know if you can see it i can see that yeah of Harry Callis. So I grew up living with my grandparents and they would watch Phillies game. They wouldn't watch. They would listen to Phillies games on the radio in the kitchen while they were sitting at the kitchen table playing cards. So Harry Callis was a huge part of my upbringing and my Phillies childhood. So we pulled this Harry Callis and I was like, Rich, give me this card. I have to have it. Oh, that, <laughs> that's so cool. So. And you said you grew up in Jersey, so you're on like the closer to the Philly side of Jersey? Yes, uh, we actually, uh, we jokingly call where we're from, we call it South Philly South. <laughs> I actually have a friend, uh, one of my best friends, he's from Philly. Kyle, love you. But I will tell you, he has made me hate Phil Philly fans, uh, or should I say Philadelphia Eagle fans. Um, Eagles fan, right. Yeah. <laughs> he's right. made me very, very... Him and my him and he has another buddy named Kip. Kip, rest in peace. Uh, they made me dislike Philly fans, and I used to love the Eagles, especially during like the Donovan McNabb days. Um, right. I was a huge fan until I met him, and he just made me hate everything about Philly. The Flyers, it's, the Phillies, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the Sixers. I'm a big Allen Iverson fan, so it was just one of those. Not, so I didn't, I didn't know anything about basketball until Allen Iverson came around. And when I was in high school, um, one of the business classes I was in, we got to go up to a Sixers game, and they kind of make it more of like a school-worthy trip. We got to go see a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that was going on, how, um, how they. Uh, everything is how like how everything works like the inner workings of a basketball game i guess and um alan iverson was playing back then when i was in high school and a friend of mine was like oh can you take i'm gonna date myself she said can you take this disposable camera and take <laughs> pictures of alan iverson i'm like yeah i guess so sure whatever you want and i did i, and I remember i like paying attention to alan iverson i'm like this this is great. This, I love this sport. I love Allen Iverson. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. And in fact, when the National was in Atlantic City four or five years ago, six years ago maybe, I got to meet him on my birthday. Oh, that's cool. VIP party. It was like the most amazing thing. Yeah. And I mean, he's one of my favorite players because, yeah, he's listed as six feet. Uh, but he's really like 5'10". No, yeah, he's not yeah. six feet. I'm, f I'm five nine, <laughs> and I'll, I'll have I'll send you a picture of me and him. I'm taller than him. So yeah, and the way he would take it to the rack, and and during that time he had Shaq, you have um, Matumbo, like you had some oh. really big centers at the time, and he had no yeah. fear of just taking nope. it to the hole. And I love Allen Iverson. Uh, his attitude kind of was a little bit iffy here and there, but man. Mm. On the court, that guy was was a beast and monster. So, last question about Sarah Layton. Who? What's your favorite product right now, currently in the market? Um. So I'm actually kind of really big into wrestling, WWE. Oh. So the two most recent products I opened were WWE, and I also I love the F1 Chrome products. 
Um, I try not to open it because they're expensive and <laughs> I, as a business owner, I'd rather sell it. But um, every time I'm in the shop, I'm like, Ugh. So you have the same problem that everyone else has because it, it is like, uh, I always say it's like a recovering alcoholic as a bartender because it is, it is a big fight to not want to just rip things open. Um, so I personally have that problem. That's why I try not to hold too much product in in, um, in my studio because I'll stare at it and just like, rip me, rip me, open, please. <laughs> we we used to do that a lot when we first started. Cause I I mean I was not a collector, but I always loved op the 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 act of actually opening a box and opening packs of cards is really really enjoyable. So. Um, even as a non-collector, I I loved to do that, but I would always kind of hand them off and be like, okay, well, do what you need, put them in the store or, or uh, sell them on eBay, whatever. Um, so, and we used to do that a lot early on. We're we're so much better at it now than we were when we first started, because you do, you kind of like, you're like, I have all this product and I just want to open it all. Yeah. Well, if you open it all, then you have nothing to sell, so you might as well just at your doors right <laughs> well yeah you can technically sell singles but we want to sell singles um right right so if, uh, if you're looking at the background that we're talking about breaking 2013 or you're breaking 2013 absolute nba and there's an evolution now already is yes. you went from the yep. box and paper now you have a full-on banner so now we have a banner. This is actually, so the first video we were, uh, that was from our second bedroom in our tiny, tiny apartment. Um, this is from our first hobby shop that we opened in December, 2012. Wow. Wow. Yeah. This, is, this is great to be able to walk this journey with you. So yeah. and on that note, so how, how did Layton get started? Was it always the vision of being a break channel? What was the vision of Layton Sports Cards? So the initial plan actually had nothing to do with sports cards. We had planned to open up a gaming shop while we were doing some market research in our small, small town of Cape May, New Jersey. Uh, we found that uh, there was already somebody who just signed a lease in the area to open his own gaming shop. And we didn't have a big enough pool of people to really support two of those shops in the same area. So we had to pivot a little bit um at that time rich already had gotten back in the sports cards he had collected when he was younger but um you know high school and college he kind of got out of it um he he had um you know so we kind of had made a switch and we initially decided that we were going to do these group breaks other people were doing it you know mojo break was doing it uh firehand cards was still around cards infinity infinity were breaking back then and he looked at it and he said, you know, I really think that I could do this. I think I have something that I can add to it that's different than what they're doing. And I want to give it a shot. And so that's what we did. We started breaking from our house, like I said, our apartment. Um, very quickly, we grew in popularity and moved it into a shop three months later. Wow. So when you were breaking in the apartment, <laughs> were you the, the sorter or did you actually have other help? Or was it just Rich? So initially I kept saying to him, to Rich, that I was not, I'm like, this is your thing. I'm not doing it. I have my career. This is yours. You need to sort, you need to ship, you need to do everything. Um, but of course, that did not happen. <laughs> so I would work, I would basically work all day and then I would come home and I would help him sort and ship. Oh, the... we didn't. We didn't have help yet. We we probably, I would say, after we opened our shop in December, our first employee that we hired was like maybe February. Okay. Yeah. So it was, it was a pretty immediate thing once you were like, okay, I can't. I mean, everyone that knows it's breaking. We sorting and shipping is, is the least favorite part of breaking. Um, yes. Especially if you don't have the right, if you don't have the right sorting <laughs> trays in place. Uh, I remember our first break and we broke a bunch of hobby um, and we totally forgot about the sorting trays. And so the next day we had to sort and oh man, it was, just, <clears throat> it was just mountains. It was a mountain of mountain of base cards and you just yes. didn't even know what to do. <laughs> Cause you don't, you don't necessarily have a table big enough for, you know, two breaks and 
thir- it was at that time it was football, I believe. It was 32 teams of each. Um, so it, it's just like, yeah, that if you don't have the right sorting place, the pro- I think that's the first thing you need to think about when, if you want to become a card breaker. That's very true. And we didn't have the sorting trays initially either. And I had posted on Twitter a picture and it was just stacks of the cards that I was sorting. And I don't know what I put, like sorting those break or whatever. I, I don't know what I put on it. It was so long ago. And um, Doug from Mojo Break actually sent us a message and he was like, hey, you should probably look into those sorting trays. So thank you so much, Doug. That has been a lifesaver for us all these years later. Um, but yeah, we've all, we've all been through. You just kind of have to learn as you go. Yeah. They, they, so on on that note, do you, when you first started breaking, you know, you didn't have storefront. Uh, Rich didn't really have a name uh, per se. How did you guys list breaks for sale and how did you market those breaks? So we did everything through our website. We've only ever listed breaks on our website from day one until now. See, look, now we have a hardback sign, not the uh, <laughs> not the, the loose sign. Um, <clears throat> it's always been that way. And I remember there was a day where he was promoting his breaks. And at the time, Twitter was really the number one spot for collectors. Um, and I don't know how many times he had posted in the course of the day, but Twitter was like, you've posted too many times in the 24 hour period try again later <laughs> so i mean he just kind of put himself out there he would sit there live on blog tv just kind of talking to people they came into the room and um i mean you just gotta work at it you just gotta kind of kind of hustle right i mean that's all it is it's just hustling okay so you uh twitter yeah that was like the early really early stages of twitter if i remember correctly too if i'm yeah to i think, think so yeah i'm trying to think back <clears throat> so you had a website, you had Twitter, and that was basically the grind of just doing the tweet game and saying this is for sale, posting your hits on Twitter, this, that, and the other. Now, is Twitter still your main social platform, you would say? No. Um, personally, I don't go on Twitter at all. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. I, I get on there and I'm like, oh, these people, and I leave. <laughs> but um, I think, uh, and I don't mean these people as collectors. I just mean overall. Twitter just seems kind of toxic to me. But uh, um, Instagram is our biggest platform. We have over 50,000 followers on our business Instagram page. Oh, wow. Um, And that makes sense because Instagram is based around pictures and videos. And that's what we're showing off, right? We're showing off cards and we're showing videos of us pulling cards. So that's been our biggest, that's our biggest social media that we have. Yeah. And I will say any social media platform can get very toxic um facebook yeah. especially yeah. Uh, it it's one of those so being as big as you guys are now like i guess imagine the amount of negativity that gets just thrown your way like if they, we're unfortunately in an industry where you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't and everyone needs to tell you how bad you are uh, versus telling how good yeah. you are unfortunately so as as people as big as you are in in our industry how do you handle that criticism? Did, like, did it take you a long time to just grow that thick skin? Or did you kind of just shut it out and it's just you keep it pushing? Um, it's it's always tough when you're um, when they're kind of being put down on the internet. Um, especially with our business. We chose to call the business Late in Sports Cards, which is not the most original name, but we had to that on purpose because um, it was personal to us. So we wanted to have our name so that we always had that personal connection with our business. And then the flip side of it is, is when people are attacking you online, look at this. Before we <laughs> used any sort of uh, program to like switch screens, we had to like pick up the camera and move it to the computer screen. Um, I don't, sometimes I wonder how people watched us back then. But, uh, <laughs> but it is, it's difficult because, um, you know, I mean, you want people to like you and, and the internet doesn't really know who we are truly who we truly are so it's tough but um i think the best thing to do is to kind of forget it you have to kind of let it go and um i don't know if you watch ted lasso i don't okay well this says be a gold be a goldfish and he ted lasso would tell his players you have to watch it it's a great show 
Um, he would tell him, be a goldfish, because goldfish have the shortest memory of all animals. Oh. You just gotta keep, you just gotta keep going. And that, it, it is true, like I said, <laughs> uh, you could be doing the best thing, and someone will try to figure out that one negative they'll try to search for the negative and it's, it's it's not even just in our industry it's in all of sports i would say i mean i'm a huge golfing fan and so one instance that just comes out to mind is i don't know if you follow women's uh, P, uh lpga but women's golf is lexi thompson i think this was uh 2019 maybe 2018 where mm -hmm. she was in a major at the ana and someone called in I don't even know there's a hotline for this but someone called in a hotline because they super zoomed one of her shots in the bunker and her ball had made accidental contact with the with the sand and they reported that because as a um, faulty uh, scorecard and so mid round she's on hole 14 leading the major tournament and uh, one of the officials comes up there and says hey you signed a bad scorecard we got to uh, dock you two strokes and so she uh -oh. actually, she actually wound up losing the tournament because of that um she clawed her way back fought it in but it's just that's the unfortunate of uh, uh, our, our um industry and that just as yeah. a sport is everyone's trying to look at the negative more than the positive and that's one of the main purposes why we're doing this i like being able to meet people um I didn't know Sarah until the Mint Collective. You can see the background Mint Collective. And, you know, since then, we just had great conversations with one another. Um, very inviting. Great to meet women in the hobby, which is also another thing we'll talk about later. Um, but, yeah, try to keep it more positive. This is all I'm trying to get out of this. Um, but on that note, is there... Um, what kind of product did you start breaking? Did you go retail? Did you just always just break hobby in, in terms of the first break? Like, how did that all work out? We've always broke hobby. Back in 2012, it wasn't hard to get. Um, we were able to get accounts with distributors pretty easily and just go. I mean, it, it was a lot different back then than it is now. I mean, obviously now it's so hard to get product. We also struggle to get product. Um, we don't have direct accounts with the manufacturers, so we're, we rely on distributors. Um, we rely on card shops. We rely on online stores like the big online stores i'm not going to say their names but everybody knows who they are um and we buy from all of them so um but back in 2012 you could call a distributor and ask for 100 cases of whatever the product was and as long as you paid them you, you were able to get it oh wow so yeah that's, big difference i think that's a very very interesting thing to to, to learn about uh, as you're talking is Layton themselves, you guys don't have, because there's a thing going out there that sometimes you guys get loaded boxes and all that stuff. But if you don't have, so you're telling me if you don't have direct accounts with Tops with Panini, there's no way really you could get loaded boxes if it's not coming from them directly. That, that's what you're right. telling me. That's, I, I mean, yeah, for real. I mean, we don't know. And if you saw our warehouse, you would realize that we honestly have no idea where you know, I mean, when product comes in, you know, release day products coming in a couple days before, it all gets put on the same shelf, no matter where it came from. If it came from this distributor or that distributor, or it came from Blowout or whoever, it's all together. So there's no way for us to really know where it came from. But we do not, no matter who believes us or doesn't believe us, it's up to whatever. I mean, we've applied many times, Tops. <laughs> we've tops. applied. I mean... We've applied as recently as 2022 uh, for one of them, and we just, it, I don't know, they lose it. I don't know. Someone who's in that department doesn't think we should get it. That is, we never... that is just a crazy thing to me to know <laughs> how long you guys have been in the game and you guys still are not getting, but then you, I see other people that open local car shops and they're actually getting it. So it, it's kind of just interesting for you to, to be able to say that um thank, thank you for sharing that with everybody so uh, on on that note did when you guys set out did you ever envision yourself did you ever envision Leighton sports cards being as big as Leighton sports cards is today? no not at all um i didn't really know what to expect from it um and like i had said i had a career i worked in healthcare administration and i was really focused on that and um 
I had no idea. Like I had no idea there would ever be a time where it was better for me to leave my career that I had put a lot of time into to kind of like take on to the family business and keep the family business going. Um, I never expected to um, be looked at as like leaders and role models, which sounds so silly to say to me, but you know, I mean, I heard it a lot at the big collective. I, w I walked up to three women who were talking at a uh, uh, women in the hobby gathering that we had to introduce myself. And they said, why, what are you doing talking to us peons? <laughs> and it kind of took me back. Cause I was like, I'm, I don't know who you are. I just wanted to say hi and meet you. I, I'm sorry. You know, I, I don't, I don't look at us like that. We're just regular people who just been, who just, I, I don't know what to say, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate that, um, I've been able to kind of pivot in the last couple of years and really put a lot of my personal focus in the hobby towards women in the hobby and, um, inclusion and diversity. Um, so I've become way more passionate about the hobby as a whole and the people that are in the hobby. So, I mean, when I can meet any other, any other women who collect, I'm so excited. No, I'm so excited for it, yeah. And that's actually really, really cool to hear because in, in, in any grind, whether you're on top of it, whether you're on the bottom of it, sometimes you don't actually really know where you're at until you take a step out. Um, because you're yeah. just in your box. You're, you're just, I mean, us as us as breakers, you, you stay in a box. We're on YouTube. We're in the YouTube space. And so you don't really know what's going on in the outside world at times. And then you step out of that YouTube space and people actually recognize you. And you're just like, wait a second, what? Like, that's cool. Right. Right. Yeah, that's cool. And then I look, I mean, like Hannah from She Collects Cards, her YouTube videos. I, I mean, my husband listens to them all the time. They're so good. And there's so much information in there. You know, so I look at her and I'm like, wow, I'm like, she's so great. Oh, that's hobby, awesome. You know? And I don't put my, I like, I never really put myself on that same pedestal. Um, because I mean, there's so many great women who are in this, this hobby who have content that's out there that everyone should be watching or listening to or whatever, supporting on their, uh, for the, their group breaks and everything. It's just. So, I don't know. I like this. I still like to think that we're equal, you know? No, that, and that's awesome. But, and that's the kind of crazy thing. Uh, I don't, you know, did you meet, get to meet Tim from Slab Strong? He was wearing the big giant hat uh, at the Mint Collective. Very briefly. Very briefly. Okay, so Tim, uh, he's going to be on the channel as well. Um, Tim, he was telling me a story at the Mint Collective that a kid went up to him and asked him for his autograph. And he didn't even know how to respond to it. He was just like, wait, what? <laughs> he, goes, he was telling me it was the sloppiest signature. Uh, oh, look at the evolution. Uh, now we yeah, got so we have a face camera. And this is from this. We're in Florida here. This is our Florida shop. Our, our, our original Florida shop. Got you. Got you. So I see that now you have the whole uh, day of breaks listed. It's, a, it's, a, it's on a straight schedule now. So yeah. is, is that still constant for you guys? Do you guys have a set schedule for what time you guys are breaking or do you guys go? Yes. Okay. Yep. I think that's really important. Um, if you're buying into something and you want to watch it, you want to know when it's going to take place, right? So that you can watch it live. Um, all of our videos are recorded live and then we upload them on the YouTube individually. So, I mean, if you do miss a break, you can't be there live. It's, it's always there for you to view. But um, yeah, we started putting that little a little uh, schedule on the screen even so people could see how many spots were left like at this point there's still impeccable nba and there's three spots left in the last three breaks so and it's actually funny i say I'm a, I'm a guy weirdo guy that likes to look at details and i see in the back because i've emailed you back and forth um that says latent sports cards at gmail.com so now now you've evolved into actually have a latent email address so that's actually yes, really do. cool that's that's we do. really, really people cool. still so we obviously people use this one as well because it's been around for so long so we still look at that one a lot but uh yeah we all have our own emails now <laughs> <laughs> so present present time we'll, we'll move into present time for uh latent sports cards and a hobby so with the evolution you know COVID came and you just saw that influx of everything um and it's from just in the two year span, the industry is kind of, I wouldn't say turned upside down, but it's more 
imploded and it's just there's so many arms there's so many different platforms there's so many different breakers um what what's your what's your take on the current status of the evolution of the hobby are you liking where this hobby is going i do like it um i think that i know there's a lot of people who are collectors and they only collect they don't sell um and they're a little upset because with these with uh, uh, collect with the cards being more of like an alternative investment now, um, it's harder for them to get the cards that they had always collected. Um, so I know there's like this little struggle be struggle between the investors and the collectors or the the flippers and collectors. But I, I, if it wasn't for the people who have been coming in and flipping cards or investing in the cards, the values wouldn't go up. And yeah. I think that's what's going to keep it going. Yeah, I agree. I I think uh, there is a weird balance shift. Um, I don't know if it's more investor or more still collector at this point. But there's an ongoing joke that I've seen um, that I've talked about with another gentleman. Um, and he was like, sometimes we just feel like it's the same $100 bill getting passed around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I, I thought about that. I was like, yeah, that is kind of kind of true the hobby uh it seems it, it, again i only I, i'm majority on twitter actually in the terms of following um and staying active on i'm insta stupid uh so when you do see a man in, on, on instagram you know and their weird posts that come out and it just looks awful i apologize because i don't know how to use the thing <laughs> so uh, but <laughs> i mean i barely i barely do either i i it's a lot. I mean, you had to teach me how to use Discord. I'm like, you're like, do you have Discord? I'm like, I got it, but I don't know what to do with it. So. There's only so much social media that I can be a active on. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it and it, it's a, it's surprising. Me and my my wife was making fun of me the other day because uh, TikTok, and she's like, you watch a lot of TikTok videos. I was like, it's not really TikTok. It's actually like on every platform I'm on. If it's YouTube, you got the YouTube shorts. If you're on Facebook, they have the reels. Um, and so they constantly just pop up in any feed that I'm on. So it's not like, and then you get stuck and you just flip up. You're like, yeah. oh, there's another one. Oh, that one's funny. Maybe just go to another. Next thing you know, 30 minutes of your life has gone on. <laughs> you know, so Even more than that. TikTok is, oh, TikTok is so addictive. It is so, so addictive. addictive. It is so addictive. <laughs> but okay, so. On that note, investors and collectors, you know, there's that battle between a who's right, who's wrong. And you have the flippers that everyone gets mad at. And it's kind of just like, you know, there's a space for everybody in here. And if you don't want to play, if you don't want to play, pay the flipper game, then, you know, just don't buy the product from them. Um, that's just the way I've always looked at it. Right. Um, right. So on and that it's funny you say that. I want to add, um, we mm -hmm. actually, um, I know for a little while there, the retail product was real hard to get right there was lines at target and walmart oh, and bad. stuff like that and we actually um we would have people come in who were, had like a bags of whatever retail product it was and we're like hey we're selling this and we wouldn't buy it from them we're like nope we're not we don't want to we don't want to feed into that yeah and, and again yeah. It, to each its own um there are times there there were times when i mean during 2020 I'll never, 21, should I say, 2021, I'll never forget someone selling um, select Prism Blasters. You know, you buy them in stores at 20 bucks. And right. they're selling them for 110 a piece, 105 a piece. Uh, but again, I get it. They're, like, especially in Southern California, we're in Southern California. Good luck trying to get something in, the, in, in an actual store. It's gotten better now that Target kind of withheld and then it started branching out to others. But there is no way um, out here that you can walk into a place and buy a uh, retail product. There's just no way. So if you wanted to right. break retail, we kind of were just at the mercy and just is what it is at that point. Um, right. Yeah. You either break cards or you don't break cards. And, you know, we just wanted to break cards. So we're guilty of having to spend a couple times more than what the product actually yeah. was but we needed product. You have, to, you have to do what you have to do you know i mean if you're if that's what you can get that's what you can get you have to get you know anytime you have an opportunity to get product you have to you have to go for it it was just something that we never um we had never done i mean when we started late in sports cards and group breaking group breaking wasn't what it is today 
it was looked at as a fad. I mean, I still see people say it like, it's, this is not gonna last for group breakers. Well, I disagree. Um, but back there, it was so important for us to open that hobby shop. When we had the opportunity to open our first shop, we jumped on it because we it helped us appear legitimate to the rest of the hobby. So, and we also tried to distinguish ourselves from um, the, the retail stores because we were just trying to secure our space. And so we only did hobby products. We had it, we break from our shop. That was a huge selling point for us for a long time, breaking live from our shop, you know? Um, but now you don't need to do that. And that's totally fine. It's great, you know? But back then we kind of had to show a hobby that we were here, that we were actually a business and that we were going to keep pushing forward. Yeah, and honestly, as uh, I got back into collecting cards, or I'm one of the guys that got dragged into COVID to try to figure out where to spend my money. Um, and it led us into creating, me reconnecting with some childhood friends and us creating 777. But I think the great part about breaking is the bad stigma is breakers, you know, just rip you off. And it's kind of like, nah, um, I kind of look at it as, you know, I would rather spend $100 <laughs> on a team I'm chasing than spend a hundred dollars on product and end up with a whole bunch of cards I don't know how to sell. Um, you know, again, I'm a Chicago guy, so if I'm if I'm chasing the Chicago Bears, I don't want a huge bunch a bunch of Aaron Rodgers demo cards. Like, I just I would, I would throw them away. I don't even want to sell it. I just don't like the guy. So it just makes sense for people to break and throw the unnecessary shade at that. It, it, it's kind of. Like I said, like we've been talking about, it is what it is. Like, we just have to push more positive and understand there's a space for everybody. And if you're not in that into that space, you just got to go find your space. Um, right. Not, right. Not, yeah, not everybody's doing it the way you want to do it. And everyone has a different style of breaking, right? Like, um, right. Yeah, that's that's. But there's nothing. Theme. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, what I enjoy is different than what you enjoy, which is different than our, you know, somebody else enjoys. So having so many breakers there and all doing things differently is a good thing. Yeah. I know, I am very well aware that a lot of people think that we are boring. That's fine. You can think that we're boring. I know that we have a lot of people who like the way we do our breaks. They like that it's professional. They feel that, um, how do I put this? Like they feel like it's, it's more of a space that you can have, you can watch with your children or your grandmother or whoever, and there's not gonna be anything going on that's inappropriate in any way. And I'm not saying that what people do is inappropriate. I, I'm going off on the wrong direction, but. No, I um, understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, just because, you, you know, I mean, a lot of, I, we hear it all the time, like they're so boring, they're so boring. That's fine, but we also have customers who have, um, disabilities you know or sensory issues and they enjoy the way we do it because they're not gonna you know if they have headphones in we're not screaming and carrying on and it's not setting them off in a way that makes them uncomfortable so you know i mean we we try to be welcome to everybody so but if you don't like us go somewhere else it's really okay yeah and, th and i think that's a, a great point <laughs> that you wanted to, uh, that we were talking on is that there's a space for everybody and and I hate to say it this way, and then I don't mean to be brash to anybody that's watching or anything like that, is, I mean, as a breaker, as a guy that's been in the hobby, um, Layton's been doing this for 10 years, uh, 10 plus years. And so it, it's one of those, it's to talk negatively about them, about doing it, they obviously have been doing it something right because they got years ahead, light years ahead of everybody else currently right now. <laughs> so I just want to just point that out. You know, we I am nowhere close to a latent sports card level and there's many others that I see on Twitter, unfortunately, that say the negative things uh, about you guys. And I have nothing but respect. Like I said, my if it wasn't for a company like you, it wasn't for breakers like you, there would be no foundation for us. So it's really hard to throw shade at any foundation. That's just me personally, sorry to get on my rant. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, um, what would you say is the three cons of the hobby currently? Is there three cons that you would just think that stick out to your head? So I think the divide 
is a huge con. That could actually be all three in one. The my dog's barking over here. Um, the the divide of um, if you collect, I don't know, this player and they don't like that, and everybody just kind of attacks each other, attacks each other over it. I just feel that um, you there's no wrong way to collect. That is a I say that all the time when people come into our shop and are like, you know, what should I collect? What should I do? It's like, there's no wrong way. Collect what you like or collect what you enjoy. Um, but yeah, there's like this big divide where it's like everyone kind of pins themselves against each other. And I don't think that's healthy overall. It's not healthy for people overall. Um, and shocking news for everybody. A lot of us breakers, even if we are completely different in the way we break, we all get along. We all know that we have our spot in the hobby. You and I get along. And that is true. We do things differently. You know, there's a lot. I mean, I met, um, uh, Mike from Pull Wax. We are very different from Pull Wax. We had a lot of common. We had a lot of great conversations. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> no, and I agree. And um, I will have to add a little bit of sentiment. Again, I'm not a guy that throws a throw shade or at anybody. I'm not going to mention any names. But when I first met you, I even asked you, if I talk to you through our 777 account, is it okay? And you kind of just looked at me like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And, and the reason why I had to bring it up, because there's been a couple instances where I've jumped on streams and just to say hello, we just want to stop by and say hi, support you guys. And I've gotten my head bit off. Um, I've been told that there's an unknown, uh, an un, a written rule of breakers, a breaker's code, that you're not supposed to go into other breakers and, and say hello under your break name. And it's kind of like, whoa, dude, I just want to say hi and support. Like, <laughs> That's know? it. I mean, now, if you were going in there and you're like, 777 breaks, come to us, let's, you know, and trying to like, swipe yeah, them. For, yeah. That's different. But just come in and say hi. I mean, we do it all the time. And sometimes we'll go into on the on Instagram, we'll go on to like using the latent sports cards account and people are like, were you hacked? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not hacked. We're just checking it out, seeing what's going on around here. Got you. So I, I'm, I, I like to end things on a positive. What are your three pros of the hobby right now? Um, so for me, um, the biggest pro I think is the amount of women who are now coming out and are collecting and are doing it publicly. Um, that's huge for me. I love to see that. Um, I think another pro is going to be fin the Fanatics takeover from Tops. I'm going to say that's a huge pro. I think we're going to see a lot of really good changes in the future. I'm excited for it. Oh, that's, so speaking <laughs> of the, the Fanatics takeover, the, the, on that note, I think, do you think that it's going to be an influx of product or do you think that um, it's, the game is just going to evolve? Like. I know one of the things that's being tossed around right now, we'll take a product, uh, Mosaic, NFL Mosaic, 2022 NFL Mosaic. One of the things that's going around right now is that everyone's posting Genesis cards. And Genesis cards used to be that super short print, uh, that SSP, but it seems like everybody has them. Do you think with Fanatics taking over, do you think there's going to be in some type of evolution to the SSP where it's not so common? Or do you think it's going to actually be worse? Um, I think a lot of people are assuming that Fanatics is going to flood the market with product. And I think that Fanatics is smart enough to know that flooding the market is going to crash the market. Yes. And they've put a lot of money out to make more money, right? So I don't see them doing that. Yeah, that, 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 that's the fear right now. And everyone's fearing that's what Panini is doing currently right now. Um, it, it's kind of before, like, you chase, you, you, you went for the chase, you went for the number card. Okay, then Panini started doing lower number cards. So, you know, before it was like, okay, 1 to 99, uh, one, uh, one, or number to 199, 1 to 100, number to 75, number to 50, number right. to 25, one of one. You know, it's just like, right. uh, and, and it's just kind of like, okay, so where is the actual value of this number card now? Because, like, I, for instance, we have a gold standard one of two Jerry Rice, Brandon Ayuk card. And 
they have the same exact card. It's a it's a it's an uh, auto. It's a, they have the same exact card, just with a different color in the back, number to five. It almost right. looks exactly the same. So I kind of I understand where you're coming from. Is it kind of seems that they are trying to flood the market in a sense. Um, I don't think. I don't know if it's on purpose, but indirectly, they, I think that's what it's kind of doing. Like I saying, with the Genesis cards, even though they're not numbered, I just see them flying all over the place. Downtown, kaboom. It's like, it just seems like the, the case hits and the super case hit, or the super short prints are not really short anymore. Um, I don't know if you right. guys feel the same way. Yes and no. I, I mean, I see it. I know, um, I know, at least they're telling us. I guess you never really know the truth, but they're telling us that like the production level, the production level of the cards now compared to the eighties, you know, the junk wax era is still very, very small. You know, it's still, it, we're not at those numbers. Um, I think what I see when I, when I see what they're doing, I feel like they're trying to make more products to meet the demand, but they keep putting out like new SKUs, right? Like there's new, there's like mosaic this, mosaic that, or, you know, or whatever the new, I mean, sometimes the names they come up with for products is a little ridiculous, but you know what I mean? Like they're like making more, more different, more items to try to help the demand without just taking one product and just making millions and millions of that one product. And I, you know, I'm not sure there's a real answer to how to fix that. Yeah. I am very sure that they are going to come up with something though. I do know, and I can say this confidently, that um, Fanatics is looking at, um, Fanatics is going to really improve a lot of things that we see. And I think if you look at Topps' Instagram account right now, you're seeing a lot of different types of posts. Mm -hmm. they're, they're posting now compared to pre-Fanatics. So I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, I mean, of course I was nervous at first because you have to be, right? I mean, this is our livelihood. This is your life. Well, I mean, I know you have a another business, but we want to be here, right? Yeah. And the uncertainty and the speculation does cause a lot of insert uncertainty. So, but I truly think with the conversations that we've had with a lot of the higher ups in Fanatics and, you know, the people that we know at Tops, that it's going to be okay. That's good. That That's a reassuring to know. <laughs> Sarah Lane has said it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, on, on that note, what, like, right now, you guys are on top of the food chain. You guys are one at the top of the food chain. What's the next, what's the next step? What do you see in the future for Lane Sports Cards? So, uh, Layton Sports Cards is finally opening up their card shop, the hop, uh, the gaming shop. Oh, the um, initial, the initial dream. Initial dream. And there's our top down camera there in the top left. Ooh, there, there it you is. Go. So that was when we added the third camera that looks at the table from above so that you can see everything going around the cards that are on the table so that you know that there's no, uh, there's no funny business happening. Yeah, there was a debacle, if I remember, that somebody was doing kind of a sleight of hand type of yes. shaking with the cards. Yep, um, the Brandon, the Brandon cooks the 99. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we took that and we're like, oh, this is not good. Let's add another camera. <laughs> so were you like one of the first ones to do the top down camera at this time when that all happened? Or did you guys like the older guys come together and be like, hey, like, did you talk to Mojo and be like, hey, Mojo, did, what are you guys doing to combat this? We probably all talked about it at the time because when anything like that happens, you know, our phones are ringing or there's, we're getting tons of text messages. Like, did you see, did you see what happened? Did you see what they did? You know? And then it's like, okay, so how do we prove that we're not that? You know, I mean, obviously that's like a stain on group breaking when somebody does something like that. And we just need to kind of rise up and say, yeah, that happened, but we're not going to do that to you. Right. And yeah. We're, we're, you know, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> so, so when is the, the gaming shop? So, if you if the initial dream here here's a question if the initial dream was a gaming shop does rich yeah. actually still play like card uh, tabletop games yeah so um i should turn my camera this i don't know if you'd be able to see it one second <laughs>
Right now, my kitchen table, um, do you know what Warhammer is? No. Warhammer 40K? Okay. So it is a tabletop game. Oh, okay. These little guys. And I don't actually know how to play it at all. And you can kind of make like a little army and there's some dice and there's some, I don't know what goes on. My kitchen table is covered with these little guys. Oh, that's funny because yeah. that reminds me of a lot. Me and my youngest daughter, she's a comic book uh, junkie. She's a DC okay. comic freak. And for a while, um, right before COVID hit, we got really into Hero Clicks. I don't know if you know what Hero Clicks are, but mm -hmm. they're a comic book game very similar to that. And you know, you the whole thing is you roll dice. You know, you ha you have to make moves and uh, you throw. You know, the object is to defeat the other people. So I know I never seen that game, but I'm assuming it's a pretty similar concept where you have a map. Yeah. The squares on the map. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's all the same. So that's awesome to hear that Rich, as busy as you guys are, that he's actually still into that. Because I I will tell you, for me. One of, one of the things that I can't get rid of is playing video games. I just can't. So I've been stuck on playing mobile games. Um, that's kind of like my my break. Like I have to jump okay. on jump on a game. And it's, 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 I hate to admit it, but I spend a lot of time into a game called Clash of Clans. It, my, okay, yeah. Very, very, <laughs> a, lot, a, a lot of time. I see time. ads for those. Yeah, and believe it or not, I have a name in that community. <laughs> hey, I mean... Rich used to play, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, World of Warcraft? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rich used to play that. Oh, so much. Yeah, World of Warcraft. Oh, I was, my. oh, look at this. This is the intro. Um, the intro, yeah. This is probably one of the, the sexiest things I have seen when I was going through your, your, uh, your videos. And it's, it's like, it, it popped up beside me. I was like, whoa, what is this? And it this like, you know, 15 seconds. It's like, like the angels have spoken. So what? Ryan, Ryan and Eddie, he's uh, he's in our he's in the hobby. Uh, his his uh, social media handles are r90 r90. Um, he actually he actually um, designs that for us. Oh okay, and I think and if, and if, and if you pay attention to um like the Star Wars the. Uh, like the Star Wars and not not the movies, but like the the new stuff, like the Mandalorian, where I'll do like the Star Wars, Lucas Films or whatever it says. Yes. And um, so Marvel, you'll kind of see if, a little bit of a similarity between those and what we put together for ourselves. That's exactly what it is like because <laughs> the beginning of the Marvel is the flipping of the comic book pages, yeah. and that one is just the flipping through the cars. No. That makes a lot more sense now that you've broken down. <laughs> I mean, it is, it, look, it, now it's no longer a camera. You could actually switch screens um, for, yep. the, yeah, for the random. Yep. So <laughs> get, that's, that's actually pretty cool. So being an advocate, I mean, you were on stage at the Mint Collective. You were talking about, you know, the future of breaking and all that stuff. And one of the things you did speak about was about community. And I know we touched about that earlier, but as new guys coming into the hobby, new breakers, what's your best piece of advice? What's the first foundation block you would tell somebody? Like if you had to tell them, um, you know, this is what you need to make sure you have in place um, to make sure you're successful, what would that be? Um, I think the most important thing is to really be genuine in what you're doing, um, to like what you're doing. Um, you know, a lot of people say like fake it till you make it, but I feel like um, this hobby can kind of see through that a bit. And, you know, if you're not a fan of, we'll, we'll say golf, I mean, Forrest is opening up artifacts here. Um, I wouldn't start with a golf product. You know, if you are a huge basketball fan, open a basketball product, something that you can be excited with the community, with the collectors, with the people who are buying into your group breaks. Like they want you to be excited for them. And if you're if you're fake about that, they can kind of tell. Gotcha. You know? And I think that's probably your biggest thing. And just I mean, be honest, you know, I mean when I see things that happen, like we were talking earlier, the Brandon Cooks, the 99, that person, that that breaker, I mean, I don't even know who he is, his name or anything about him, but he's no longer here, right? He's gone. 
Um, if you want this to be a long-term thing for you and your business, you have to run it as an honest business. You can't just think you're going to take someone's card that's worth a lot of money and still stay, stay around, you know, eventually that's going to catch up to you and you're, no one's going to trust you or buy from you. I, I'm a golf fan. And I'm liking the artifacts personally. I, I like the artifacts oh. product. We love golf. We actually are huge, huge golf fans. Um, and uh, I think we're going to have a uh, cabana at the Arnold Palmer Invitational next year. So. Ooh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I may have to invite <laughs> myself. That's fine. That's fine. It's four days. It's yeah. four days. I mean, there's room for a lot of people there in those four days. Yeah, the co I mean, depending on where the cabana is going to be, but those cabanas are, are huge. Um, they can hold up sometimes anywhere between 50 to 100 people. Um, yeah, so we're gonna we're getting a smaller one because it is our first time, you know. So we're going with a smaller size, but. Well, the, uh, you we, have we, definitely have to keep. We've me been close. lucky to go. We've been there the last couple of years because uh, you know we ship with FedEx and FedEx is really taking care of us and they always invite us. So this time we're like, how about we did it this ourselves? Yeah, and, I, and, we'll see. And you guys aren't too far from too far from Bay Hill at all. No, yeah. it's like twenty minutes. Yeah, so which is pretty really cool. So I had to throw this video into here. Um, this is the Wander. This is uh oh the Wander. The, oh my goodness. Um, when I mean this thing this thing went social media crazy when it was pulled. And this is again one of those things where people are like, yeah, I think they got loaded product from Tops. Um, right. Sorry. So here's the thing now. I'm going to counter that. If we knew we had loaded cases, why would we open it first? <laughs> that is very true because you want people <laughs> to keep buying into this product. And right. if they found the treasure, why continue on a treasure hunt? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I finally saw the, um, the, the winner of the card was a kid. Oh, wow. Media. He's, he's a kid. Um, I know we shared it up at some point on somewhere on Instagram. It's there, but uh, a kid won the card, which is just so awesome. Oh, that's so cool to hear. And you know that that's the hard part about the hobby currently. If I have to add back uh, and go back about the the downfall of the hobby is, for instance, basketball product. It's such an expensive product, and <laughs> for kids, it's hard for them to get into the product because, like for me, that's what actually started my collect. Actually, baseball was my collection, um, but basketball was my second. And me and my uh, friend or slash I call him cousin we used to go after school and go to the CVS and purchase cards um, right singles uh, we would purchase cello packs and at the time we would not eat at lunch uh, we would just save our lunch money and have five bucks and buy you know a couple packs of cards at the time um, so it's one of those like that's one of the hard parts of the hobby is you see these generations of kids and it's hard for them if their parents are not financially stable it's hard for them to save up that lunch money and get uh product um that yeah that that's very true um but i pokemon and some other tcgs are a little more affordable than sports cards not that everybody who you know like sports cards wants pokemon but i mean we've seen it a few times in our shop where know a child will come in and he's got money from birthday christmas whatever it is and he wants to buy something and there's not much on our shelves sports wise that he can get yeah um you know we we have packs of course so there's always there there's there are um you know lower cost options but a lot of the times they would make their way over into the gaming room and buy some pokemon yeah, and I think that on that note, that's why it's actually very helpful for breakers because you do have a space to spend 20, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, however you're willing you want to spend. And the reason why you're starting to collect is, in, I mean, especially as a kid, you don't know the sports in detail. Generally, the normal kid doesn't know the sports realm in detail. So they just want to root for their home team and they just want their home team card. So that's why, in a sense, breaks does make sense um, into that. Now, now, in terms of first starting off as a breaker, would you say, um, you know, it, would you rather see someone start off? Would you tell someone advice and would you rather tell them to break hobby or would you rather tell them to break retail or would you just say just break what you could afford? Um, I think you should start with what you can afford. Um, you don't want to really overextend yourself too early on, um, at least until you know that you have 
yeah, a consumer base that you can that can support what you're buying. Um, Look at Forrest right now. He he just saw the wander, so he's like, oh yeah, he starts freaking out. <laughs> yeah, he's he's freaking out right now. He just he yeah. slow pause, and here it is, a ray of sunshine. He got his hand in. But I was looking, and we talked about this. Uh, the unfortunate, it's a one of one. And if you look at that left corner, that that's a hurt piece. But it's still the one of one. So I think, at the, yeah, it's, it's still at that point. It, it kind of matters, but not really. I mean, like, what's a fix in your experience? Is there a fix to this? Like, can you go to Tops and be like, hey, Tops, I got this card. Look what you guys sent me. Look what I opened. Is there anything you can do? Could, the, does Tops actually have service like that? Uh, well, I mean, they don't for us. I don't know if there's someone else they have that service for. Oh. It would be good. To, I would love to know. Um, sometimes reproducing a card is not so easy for them. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, they're, it's not like if you were to go to the tops headquarters, they, they're not printing the cards there. They're printing at a printing company. So um, I don't know. Interesting. I really don't know. That that is interesting. So, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's still like I said, the one of one, the one of wrong. That's what everyone's looking for, and I believe series two is probably going to be the hunt for Bob Wit. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that's just what what's going to happen. So we're getting to the tail end of the video. Now, last question on new breakers coming to the community. Every breaker sphere is not selling out and not losing money on a product. What would you be your suggestion of how one should market the break and what do they do? What's the grind exactly to someone coming new to not to sell out? Do you, do you think someone should go on a schedule or do you think more should just do a filter break? I think that um, starting off, you may not be able to work on a schedule. Um, you know, cause it's, I know, and I see a lot of people who do it, like whatever fills first is what breaks first. And I'm pretty sure when we started, we did the same thing. You know, I'm pretty sure Rich would list, we'll say three or four different styles of breaks or sports, whatever. And whichever one sold first was the first one he went through. And he just, you know, social media very much can be free advertising if you're in the right circle. You know, I mean, you want to spend a little money on advertising, your best bet's probably to do it through the social media channels. Um, but yeah, you just have to be there and be present. If you, even if you are, you're trying to break, you know, you're doing your group breaks and you're posting cards that you have on social media. You know, I mean, everybody loves to follow accounts that are always posting pictures of any card, anything. You know, so being consistent and posting often and building up just people who follow you is going to help you build up customers. Um, but yeah, as for working on the schedule, we love that we're on the schedule and our, our collectors and our community love that we're on the schedule, but you might not be able to do that at yeah. first. Yeah, it, 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 working on a schedule, it has, its, has its ups and downs, especially with time zones. Um, you know, like for us, we work off a schedule. We don't do anywhere near the kind of breaks you guys do on a daily basis, but we are on a schedule and I will tell you there are times on that schedule it gets a little hectic because we list many on eBay and we have those non eBay payers that start at the beginning of the break. Um, that's, that's also kind of a hard thing to do, but yeah, though, no, I, I, I agree. Just kind of do what works best for you. Uh, working on a schedule is not the easiest thing. Fortunately, we've been able to make it work, but that's also because we don't put ourselves completely out there. Like, um, I also think it's important to adapt to your collectors, to your consumers who are buying. Um, cause you may have one idea of how you want to do things, but they're going to steer you to what they want. They'll let you know what they like. They'll let you know what they don't like. And you just have to adapt to that and change. And, if, and once you find that sweet spot of how to do things, you're, you'll probably be okay. Awesome. So last part of the, of the interview is. You had talked, we talked brutally about women in the hobby and women of cards. You do have a, a Facebook call, group called Women of Cards, only to women only. Um, so if you're on Facebook, go ahead and talk that. That's going to be a topic for another video uh, down the line. But we have a free giveaway that you are promoting right now for Nationals. 
Yeah, so um, anyone, I've attended the National for 11 years now. Uh, 10 as a business and then once before we, we uh, latent sports cards began and it's very obvious when you're walking around that it's not a very diverse show uh, like probably many shows across the country and um, what I was able to do was partner up with the national Megan who works for the national um, and we were giving away four free VIP tickets to attend the National in Atlantic City this July um, to four women. Um, there's another, oh God, I wish I Mouse in the House uh, Cards, I believe was his uh, Instagram username. He reached out to me and he said, this is great. I'm a father of daughters and I'm, I support this. He sent me money for four more tickets. So we actually have eight VIP tickets we are giving away for the national this year. You have to be a woman. There's just a um, just a Google sheet. There's a link in my uh, in, on my uh, Instagram account, which is at Sarah Layton zero nine. Um, yeah, I'm excited. You know, I mean, we want to we want to bring more women uh, to the hobby, to the card shows. You know, I think there's a huge community of women online and I want to bring it to the shows as well no that's awesome so I mean I was at nationals last year nationals last year was it was insane um I got I I had a lot of steps a day <laughs> at nationals but yes. I know exactly what you're talking about it's a predominantly male uh convention you know, there, mm -hmm. you do see women here and there, but it's not a presence that you normally would come and see at a, a card convention. So I think that's completely awesome. Is there a, I, everybody that's watching, the link will be down in the description for the signups. Is there a cutoff time on when someone can sign up? So I'm actually gonna do it to the end of April. So April 30th, I guess would be the cutoff. And then I'll just do like a random of all the names of all the email addresses and we'll let the people know who won. Um, not really like, a, you know, I mean, if you give me your information, I'm not using it for anything else. You're not going to be put on a latent sports cards <laughs> failing list. You're, none of that. Like it's, it's just being used for this one thing. And then okay, well, it, it'll be gone, you know? So, um, if, if anyone has any questions, they can reach out to me. My email is Sarah at latent .com If you have any questions about it, um, yeah. I, no, I'm excited. I'm so I, excited. I, I'm really. I, I, I just was told that Floyd Mayweather was a confirmed signer um, at, at Nationals this year. Yeah, is he? Yeah. So I mean, there is a lot of pretty big names that are that are going on. I, I will let just say if I had one complaint about last year's, I don't think the signing pool was that great. But I'm not a guy that went into mine and waited for signings. Um, I, I think get... a lot of so they've I mean they've had a lot of good guests over the years and I think I agree last year's was pretty weak but I also don't ever I mean I'm working the whole time very rarely have I ever walked the show floor because I'm always at the booth and um I think last year there was a lot of people who might not have been comfortable coming out just yet yes no because of COVID yeah it was still going around like even for me I I was one of the guys one of the the few that was still walking around with the mask the whole time because I was just uncomfortable. Um, because yep. I, it's one thing being out, it's another thing being out in the closed space with that many people. I mean, it was at least 30,000 people a day. <laughs> and that was, I think that was like the first big thing that, that we, I mean, we did, we got to go to the Super Bowl, but you know, but hobby wise, I think that was the first big event that we had gone to where there was a lot of people. And we all kind of, our whole crew that was with us, we all kind of like stepped back and we're like, uh. Are we good? <laughs> yeah, you know. So, yeah. I mean, we had masks made with our logos because we told everybody like, it's not required to wear a mask in there. I don't think it was, right? No, it wasn't. It wasn't required, yeah. But, you know, we would prefer if you did, we want you to be safe. Here is a mask. And I think our whole crew did, except for the breakers when they were breaking, they wore it. Yeah, I, I'm just curious. Last question, uh, and then we'll we'll cut this off. When you guys went to the uh, uh, to nationals and you broke live, did they provide you with um, internet service, or did you have to bring your own? Uh, so they provide you with it. Um, it's not free, <laughs> but um, <laughs> the, you know, I mean, the Breaker Pavilion. We were able to get our booth 
paid for our booth last year outright. A lot of times the distributors will um, give booths away to their customers, like their top customers. Last year we just bought the booth ourselves. Um, but yeah, all that's there. I mean, you got to bring all your own equipment, but the internet line is there. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's actually yeah. really good to know because I've always wondered that. Um, I didn't know if that was the same case for the mint or what have you, but you know, it's just one of those random questions I decided to just ask, but yeah, yeah, you know, we're, 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 you know, a little bit longer than I expected, but always having, always a great time having a conversation with you, Sarah. I appreciate you taking Thank the you. time and, you know, coming out and actually guys, we actually had to re-record this because I did a rookie error. <laughs> So thank you again for coming back out and being on the channel sure. and doing this recording. Do you have any last parting words? Uh, not really. Um, thank you. I enjoyed talking to you at the uh, Collector's Carnival. Um, you were not afraid to walk up to me, which was kind of cool. You know, I mean, it was nice to meet a lot of people. And I look forward to meeting everybody else at future events as well. I mean, we're pretty approachable other people think it or not so if you have any questions or you know questions about breaking questions about anything reach out we're here yeah and approach them in the positive way people so <laughs> yes please, please. Yeah, just have to throw that out there but <laughs> I, i'm gonna end the video again sarah i appreciate your time I am SC1, that is Miss Sarah Layton of Layton Sports Cars. Um, thank you again for another episode of Meet the Hobby. Catch you at the, at the next one, guys. Peace out.